What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Tyler. Welcome back to the Everide channel and today we're talking about the Honda CRF 450L. So if you're new to the Everide channel, I ride dual sport motorcycles and dirt bikes for a living. So I have the opportunity to buy, ride, and test many different motorcycles. And I bought the 450L with my own money. I have no ties to Honda or any other motorcycle manufacturer, so this review will be brutally honest. And this was a hard review to make because there were days when I really liked this motorcycle. And then there were days when I wanted to light it on fire. So it's been nearly a year since I've sold it and I've really had time to look back and view the bike objectively. So let's start with the good. I love that it's quiet. I'm getting to the age where I'm telling kids to turn down their music and get off my lawn. So quiet exhaust and limited road noise really is a good thing. On my rallies, I'm often getting right up next to people to film them with my helmet camera. And with the 450L, it was like a ninja. I'd actually have to tell them that I was right there filming them on the headsets because they couldn't hear me. Next, for a dual sport, it's remarkably smooth on the road. Now, a road bike is definitely going to be far better, but the motor and suspension are smoother than any other unmodded dual sport on the road. And while some may criticize the 450L for being nearly 300 pounds, I think that's the sweet spot for dual sport motorcycles because it still feels pretty planted on the highway without being a total pig off road. Honda did a great job navigating the suspension tightrope of being decent both on and off road. It can manage short commutes or long adventure rides while still soaking up the trails that most dual sport riders will throw at it. I loved this bike for dual sporting. It is also built incredibly well. Everything feels tight, very precise, very, very Honda. No rattles, no loose anything, just a very well put together machine. To me, one indicator of a dual sport motorcycle's build quality is how a company puts together the little things like the license plate holder. The Honda's is rock solid. It's not a flimsy, cheap plastic afterthought. I loved that you could start it by just thinking of the starter button. You could breathe on it and it would fire up, even after a few cold months off the bike. And finally, the looks of this motorcycle. I love the LED headlight. I love the styling. I love the subdued graphics. It's just a really good looking dual sport. They didn't take any big risks and make it gorgeous like the Royal Enfield Himalayan, but even though it still looks dirt bikey, they did enough to make it stand out. And now onto the list of stuff that I didn't like so much about the Honda 450L. First, the two gallon tank paired with the pretty thirsty 40 miles per gallon I was getting meant that I was cutting rallies short to head back to town to fuel up. This might also hamper your commuting plans and adventure legs unless you plan pretty meticulously around gas stations or get an aftermarket tank. Second, as many have noted on the forums, this bike is nearly unrideable without an ECU mod, which tacks on an additional $800 to the already pretty steep price. Without it, the bike will sputter, stall, struggle at low speeds and low revs, and then nearly throw you over the front during engine braking. Unfortunately, these problems still exist to a decent extent, even with the mod installed. So maybe you've heard of the infamous Honda 450 flameout issue. Now on a track with the CRF 450R or in a desert race with the 450X, low speed cruising and enduro trail riding really isn't a priority for Honda, so I can look past it on those bikes. But I wish the 450L didn't have that infamous 450 flame out. Imagine putting along low speed, clutch in, and all of a sudden there's a pop, the starter motor whirs, and your pelvis is catapulting into the bars. That's the Honda 450 flame out. 
If the 450L's road manners were what made me love it, it was this constant flame out at low speeds on challenging enduro trails that made me hate it. And in this case, it was the bike and not the rider because I could switch bikes back to back on these trails and could scoot right along on all the other four strokes, but the Honda would not stay on. Next, the price. Originally, I lamented that $10,000 is a lot to pay for a Honda Dual Sport, especially when you will likely have to spend even more for a tank, a seat, and an ECU. With the necessary mods, it's nearly double the price of the 250 and 300L, but you will be getting a far, far, far better motorcycle. And really, unfortunately, with today's shrinking dollar, 10K is pretty standard, even for stock Japanese dirt bikes. Next, the manual recommended maintenance schedule is on the high side compared to similar performing dual sports. But like almost all other dual sports, what the service manual recommends and what the bike actually needs can be quite different. And I know people who have adopted a far more relaxed maintenance schedule while accruing a ton of miles on their 450L. And of course it's fine, it's a Honda. So in my opinion, that's not really a con like I initially thought it would be. And finally, while hardy aluminum plate holders are one thing, the 450L has some other weirdly over-engineered stuff on it while skimping on other things. For example, the gas cap is utterly perplexing and weighs a good six tons. The foam air filter has multiple layers and a rubber outer gasket. It's nice to keep more dirt out of the motor, right? Sure, until you find out that it costs $60. And that's a lot for a foam filter that you'll still need to replace fairly often. And to change or clean that filter, you'll be removing your entire seat, mashing your hand into a tight space next to a nasty, sticky air filter to fiddle with a minuscule wing nut that falls all too easily into the air box. I wish more thought had gone into making the air filter changes a bit simpler. The aforementioned gas tank is titanium, which is very cool, but while two gallons is massive for a track bike, it's just too small for a light adventure dual sport. They've put plastic covers over the motor and injected foam into the swing arm to deaden noise and vibrations on the road, which I love. But then they decided to still use a cable clutch. So they're spending money in some areas, but cheaping out on others. So with the 450L, we've got some wins and some losses. You can tell this bike was definitely designed in a boardroom where Honda's really cool marketing department, racing development team, and engineers had to make compromises with accounting and executives and the EPA. And now from my personal experience, this is the biggest objective criticism with the 450L. My 450L's story starts with Brandon who bought it brand new as a light commuter. Unfortunately, after just a few weeks, Brandon realized that a dual sport with knobbies, a plank seat, 80 miles of range, and relatively poor gas mileage was actually a pretty miserable bike to commute on the freeway with. So, he sold it to my friend Jay at a heavy loss. Jay brought it to Southern Utah for a rally after installing a C-Concept seat, Modoz tires, a Vortex ECU, handguards, a skid plate, and several other really nice mods. Mid-rally, I asked Jay more of a joke than anything if he wanted to sell the 450L to me for the crazy good deal that he had bought it for. And without hesitation, almost suspiciously, he said yes. Now when I bought it, I really liked it. My DRZ had been destroyed by a side-by-side -side a few months earlier, and obviously the 450L made a far better dual-purpose machine than my much more needy KTM 300 XCW two-stroke, which I had to use for my rallies at the time. Now, I'd like to make a more detailed comparison video in the future, so I'll spare all the details, but Damon, aka Mr. Duff Factor, brought his DRZ470 for a back-to-back -back comparison with the 450L. And during this comparison between the nearly new and decently modded 450L and a 20-year-old rebuilt but modded DRZ, I realized that even though the 450L is a good dual sport, I couldn't justify keeping it when Damon's old modded Suzuki was faster in a drag race, easier to ride, and far less expensive. I sold the 450L shortly after and made plans to rebuild my total Black Widow. 
I ended up selling the 450L to a frequent rally guest and good friend Thomas, who had it for a little while, decided he liked his old Yamaha WR450F better, and put it up for sale within a few months. My friend Jerry was going to buy it from Thomas, but ended up buying a different 450L with fewer miles but no mods. Just 16 days later, Jerry already wanted to sell his 450L at a $500 loss. And I hope it's okay that I quote your text, Jerry, but he wrote, It's hard to ride and slow. I rode it for like 20 minutes and it stalled at least 10 times. It also engine brakes strangely. The first time I let off the gas, I almost went over the handlebars. So, here's the big criticism. Brandon had it for less than a month. Jay had it for less than a month. I had it for six months, Thomas kept it for nine months, and sold it to Wes. So, the biggest objective criticism against this bike, five owners in just 17 months. Honestly, it was a perfectly good, low mileage, solidly modded, gorgeous Honda Dual Sport. We all felt that it was worth the money when we bought it, so why did we all bail on it so quickly? Well, Honda's biggest problem with the 450L it's not necessarily an issue with the bike itself. The bike is a perfectly passable dual sport with a few irritating quirks, just like every other dual sport ever made in Japan. But when looking at statements of past owners in forums and groups, many like me can't get over the value gap when compared to similar performing bikes. Many like Brandon find that a cheaper street bike would make a better commuter. Many like Jay find that it's not a very friendly beginner bike with its motor quirks. Many like Thomas find that other bikes are preferable for light adventure. Many like Jerry can't get over the motor quirks that made it difficult to ride at low speeds. And even Honda themselves killed off the 450L and replaced it with the RL. Now, here's the thing. I just got a text back from Wes, who is the current owner of my old 450L, and good news. He doesn't have experience on a ton of bikes, but when compared to his experience with the Honda 250L, he loves it. So I'll copy and paste his text in the description. So guys, other than the flame out issue I had with both the 450X and the L, I have nothing against Honda. Two of my top five dual sports of all time are Hondas that weren't actually intended to be dual sports, the XR400 and XR650R. Those are both fantastic machines, made fantastic dual sports, but they're no longer in production. So Honda's biggest problem with the 450L isn't the twitchy throttle, the infamous flame out, the tiny tank, or a $60 air filter with an antiquated wing nut fastener. We're dual sport guys, we can get past all that. The big problem is that we would rather pay half the price to have the legendary bikes that Honda got rid of to make the 450L. So what the Honda CRF 450L really needs is time. Time to get used, to get cheap, Give it a few more years for the 450L's price to stabilize and compete with the older value 450 dual sport platforms like the XR, DRZ, and WR. And it'll come into its own. It's a good bike, and in time, maybe one of the greats. But there's no doubt that it's hard to compete with the prices and the pedigree from the legends of yesterday. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and as always, an enormous thanks to the ladies and gentlemen who attend my rallies that support my family business, and for my amazingly generous patrons and producers who make videos like this possible. Without you, I would literally be nothing, and I'm so grateful for your support. If you're interested in a rally, the 2022 spring and fall schedules are both available, as is the Dominican Super Rally. So if you want to be a part of that, I'd love to see you there. You can find all that information at everideadv.com. I'll put a link in the description. Much love, ladies and gentle tubers. Everide out.